What's going on guys, Matt here from Become Elite and today I wanna to give you a very good insight into my weekly gym routine that I do while I'm in season with my professional team. If you guys end up liking how I structure my gym program that I'd love for you to check out my individual training programs on my website, link in the description if you wanna check those out. But here on the screen right now is my full routine from last week. Every single day, every warm up routine, every exercise, every set, rep, weight, etc. Go ahead and screenshot this, write this down, copy it, whatever you want to do with it for free. I just want to give this to you guys up front. So in this video, I want to break down this weekly gym routine, basically what goes through my head every single day, what the focus is on each workout, why I'm choosing certain exercises, how sore I am the next day, how I taper off for games, and just how I continue to build strength or at least maintain strength in season playing multiple games a week sometimes. So I'd really encourage you guys to stick around and watch this full video because I think there's a lot of value in it a lot of insight into what goes on in my head every single week, every day, how I plan my routines, all that stuff. Um, so hopefully you guys stick around and hopefully you watch this full video. So the very first thing I wanna say is that this is just a typical week for me. This is just what I did last week. This is not a routine. This is not something I do every single week because my weekly routine, what I do in the gym, is completely dependent on how my body is feeling that day or that week or how that game went or how training's been. It's all dependent on how I'm feeling. So I wanna make this very clear. Every single week, if not every single day, I'm taking a step back and I'm listening to my body and then I'm creating a plan so that my body can best perform in the next game. But in general, if we're taking a huge step back and looking at every single week over the course of the season, this is what a very typical week looks like for me. Monday is usually a lower body strength workout. It's probably my hardest workout of the week focused around the lower body. Tuesday is an upper body strength workout. It's probably my second hardest workout of the week and it's focused around the upper body. Wednesday, I go back to the lower body, but it's lighter. It's a little bit more circuits, a little bit more body weight training, and it's just kind of a little bit more of a maintenance slash prehab workout. Thursday is a light upper body session. Again, maintenance, we're getting closer and closer to the game, so I start to taper off a little bit. Friday is usually the day right before the game, so I kind of just go into the gym just to warm up for that training and maybe do a little bit of prehab exercises, stuff like that. Saturday is usually game day, and so you will not find me in the gym unless I'm doing a little bit of activation exercises, which I've shown in previous videos, um, but very, very light. It's like half of my maintenance workout even. And then Sunday is usually our off day. It's the day after the game. I'll do a little active recovery session, maybe a little bit of yoga, stretching, foam rolling, which I have full videos about my full routine. So. That's my typical week. Typically with all of these workouts, I'm doing them before my team training session. I like to go into the gym and use these workouts as also more of like a warm up and really activate the whole body, get in a good workout, and then I feel like I'm not really inhibiting myself with training because as you'll hear, these, these workouts aren't crazy intense. In season, it's all about, for me especially, at this point in my career, it's all about maintenance and keeping everything healthy and strong. I'm sure I get this question, but yes, we do have team workouts. They're usually one or two times a week. They're pretty much like full body circuits just to keep everything strong. I kind of just double up on those workouts. Like I'll do my own workout before the training, I'll do the training, and then I'll do the team workout after. Uh, that's just personally for me, I really like to get in depth and focus on my problem areas, my past history, do all my rehab, prehab exercises. It's a lot. Most pros don't do that. Most pros probably do a little bit less work in the gym, but for me, I really am focused on trying to keep everything strong. And as you'll see, the, the workout intensity of these, like with the RPE scale, is not crazy where I'm overworking myself. It's just all maintenance and making sure everything's well balanced out. So let's get into the very first day of the week for me, at least. Usually it starts on Sunday, but for me, I like to think of it as Monday. Monday's workout. This workout is typically around a seven on the RPE scale. If you guys are not familiar with the RPE scale, it's kind of like your rate of perceived exertion, and it's all about how tough or how intense that session, that exercise, whatever is for you on a scale from one being the easiest to 10 being the hardest. So this whole workout is about a seven. It's hard, it's tough, I'm sweating, I'm using good weight, I'm gonna be sore the next day or two, but I'm not killing myself for that session or that day or for the week. I could easily add more weight, I could easily do more reps, I could easily do more sets, but I'm trying to tailor off because right now in my stage of my career, I really want to maintain and prevent injuries more so than developing speed, strength, and power, which I feel like I've already have a very good base 
it's kind of like built up already. The soreness that I feel for the next two days is definitely noticeable. Like I'll definitely feel like my hamstrings, glutes, quads, all like the general lower body is gonna have a little bit of soreness everywhere, some places more than others, but it's not really gonna inhibit me for training. I'll feel it when I start to warm up, but as soon as I'm playing, I really kind of forget about it. And I think that's the perfect amount of soreness for that in-season type of workout. Because the last thing that you wanna do is push yourself so hard with your individual workout that then you go out to the field with a team and you can barely move, your hamstrings or whatever are so sore that it really inhibits your training. And then your coach goes, wow, Matt's really had a bad week. Let's sit him, let's play somebody else because he's not showing it in this training this week. So that's why with my in-season workouts, I like to be around a seven RPE in off season when I don't have games or I'm not playing with my team, yeah, I'll push up my workouts to maybe like an eight, nine, or even a 10 sometimes. If I've been preseason with double days, maybe the RPE is gonna be around a three, four, or five. So it just depends on the week, depends where I'm at with my season, and depends on how training and games are going. It just depends on my body, like I've said. And the last thing before we get in the workout, I know, I'm sorry guys, I'm talking a lot, but there's a lot of information, a lot of stuff I wanna talk about with my workouts and with my weekly gym program. But the last thing before we actually get into the routine is that the RPE scale differs person to person. Even though this workout that I'm about to show you is a seven on the RPE scale for me, for you, it could be a 10. And if you do the same exact workout with the same exact weight, the reps, everything, you're gonna kill yourself for the next four or five days with how sore you get or it could very well be a three or five for you with the RPE scale, and it's not gonna be a tough workout. Everybody's different, everybody has different strength levels, everybody's in different periods of their, their career, or even their season, so you have to know what this workout's gonna be or how to tailor a workout so it's the right RPE scale for you. Okay, that's enough background information, I'm sorry, I was, I'm just flooding you guys with information right now, but I really want to jam pack this video and kind of give you a full ultimate guide of what, I, what goes through my head with my weekly gym routine, but here is Monday's workout. The workout starts with me just doing a five minute bike ride on the stationary upright bike. Very easy just to slowly start to warm up the whole body and get a little bit of a sweat going on. I then pretty much head straight to the trap bar deadlift. I throw on a 45 on each side, so it's 135 total pounds. And then I just do one set of like 15 reps, again as like another warm up set to warm up the entire body before I progress into slightly heavier weight. I then can finally start the actual workout. And the first thing I do is superset between the trap trap bar deadlift and the Spanish squat. The trap bar deadlift is one of my favorite exercises in the gym for athletes. It's so functional, it hits almost the entire lower body and is less technical than the traditional deadlift. I'm using 185 pounds on the bar, which again is tough, but I easily could put on another 40 or 50 pounds and do the same amount of reps. But again, like I said, I'm shooting for that seven RPE. I'm supersetting with an isometric Spanish squat, which is just like a more difficult version of a wall sit. Uh, 30 to 45 seconds of this and your quads will be screaming and burning, but I love adding this in because it's a great quad exercise that really helps strengthen the patellar tendon, which keeps my patellar tendonitis pain to a minimum during season. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I've struggled with patellar tendonitis in the past, and I found a really good way to maintain this through exercises just like this. So I'm constantly adding them into my weekly workout routine so that when I can train and play outside and have zero patellar tendonitis pain. And I actually find that when I don't do these these exercises when I don't add them in, then my patellar tendonitis starts to slowly creep back in. So this is something I'll be doing for the rest of my career, if not my entire life. After four sets of those, I progress into the next superset, which is a standing calf raise paired with the glute ham raise. So first, the standing calf raise obviously is going to target the calves. We've done a lot of quad and glute work with the last superset. So I know with this superset, we'll hit the calves and more of the hamstring. Same thing with the RPE, it's gonna be around a seven. Again, I could do more reps, I could push more, I could add more weight, but this is still a tough workout. I'm still gonna get sore from this, but it's not gonna kill me for today's training, tomorrow's training, or the next day's training. If you guys are wondering why I'm always supersetting and going from one exercise to the other, back to the first, back to the second, it's really kind of just a time management thing. When you superset, you can cut down your rest time a little bit, so I can just squeeze in more exercises in that hour I have before training starts. After three sets of those exercises, I move on to the last superset of the workout, which is just Copenhagen's paired with planks. So far with the workout, we've hit majority of the lower body with tons of compound and isolation exercises, but now I really wanna target one of my problem areas, which is the adductors, the groins. The Copenhagen is an isometric exercise that will really strengthen up the adductors, which is an area where people generally neglect, and if you're a footballer, is hugely important for passing, kicking, doing all that stuff. So I like to add in a lot of adductor work now, especially since I've had surgeries in both groins now. 
I pair the Copenhagen's with just the classic plank just to work on the entire core together. But mainly I like to do most of my core on Tuesdays and Thursdays with my upper body workouts. So that's Monday's lower body strength workout with an RPE of a seven out of 10. Moving on to Tuesday, Tuesday is my upper body strength workout. Just as the name suggests, I'm focused on upper body and I'm doing a little bit heavier weight, compound exercises, really trying to make it a good hypertrophy slash strength workout for the upper body. I start again with five minutes on the bike. As always, I always like to start on the bike just to get a little bit of a sweat going on, get the whole body warmed up together. And then I progress into the workout where I usually even warm up a little bit more by doing lighter sets of my first compound exercise. So just like I said, I'll then go to the bench press, which is the very first exercise of this routine. I'll just take the bar, do like 20 reps to warm up, rest for like 30 seconds, throw on a 45 on each side, do like 15 reps. I'm feeling really good now. I'm feeling warm. I'm feeling strong. And then I can progress into the actual workout. Again, I'm super setting. So the first superset that I'm going to do is the classic bench press paired with cable rows. So I'll put 155 pounds on the bar and I'll do around seven reps. Again, this workout is an RPE of a seven. So I could probably do 10 to 12 reps with this weight, or I could add up to 185 pounds and do five to seven reps, but I don't want to kill myself for the next few days or even for this training today. I'm also in the maintenance phase of my career. I'm 27. I'm feeling like I'm in the prime and I've built up a fantastic athletic physique and athletic base where I'm feeling very fast, very sharp, very quick. And I don't want to now push it too far, which I've made mistakes in the past, trying to do tons and tons of extra strength and plyometric and, and power work and end up hurting myself or doing too much when I'm in season and just should just be focused on playing and performing and maintaining what I've built up over my youth career, over college, all that stuff. When I was 17, 18, I had a very different approach. It was all about performance. I wanted to get faster, bigger, stronger, more athletic. And I think that was the right move. And I think that would be my advice for you. If you guys are 16 years old and are skinny and want to develop a more athletic and powerful physique, you shouldn't be doing maintenance style workouts or prehab style workouts. You can add aspects of those workouts into your workout regimen. But if your main goal is to develop a very powerful Cristiano Ronaldo type physique to cut down body fat to add muscle, you really should be doing more intense workouts during your week. You shouldn't be hitting that RPE of a five to seven. Maybe your RPE during your workouts is like an eight or a nine most of the time. And then right before the games is when you kind of taper off a little bit. I think that when you're younger, you should be willing to sacrifice a little bit of your body, a little bit of the soreness that you're going to be feeling for the long-term development of your physique, of your athleticism, and of your career. The next superset is just a, a, another classic. I do pull-ups, and then I pair that with just some single arm dumbbell shoulder press. As you can see, there's really nothing that fancy going on. I like to stick with the staples. I like to stick with, with what works and, and simplicity and, and keeping it simple. These compound exercises, they're going to hit majority of your body and keep you strong that have been around for years and years and years with simple weights, compound movements, free weights, all that stuff. I like to keep it simple. I like to focus on the, the staple exercises and then supplement in with a little bit of the extra stuff. So next in the workout, I go to the back extension apparatus and I start doing back extensions. I'm no longer doing supersets and that's just simply because I have a lot of time this morning. I think I came in a little bit earlier or the upper body workout was a little bit quicker for me. So I have some time to kill. So I'm kind of prolonging out the workout and no longer doing supersets. I just don't want to finish my workout like 20 minutes before training actually starts. And then I have that awkward 20 minutes where I'm kind of standing around, my body cools down, and then I have to warm back up when I head outside. I like to just finish my workout. As soon as I'm done, I'm still feeling warm. I'm still sweating. I pretty much put on the boots. I go outside and I start training. As you can see with the workout, I've pretty much hit majority of my upper body in some way, shape or form. I don't do any isolation exercises for the biceps or triceps. That was something that I did in my past when I really wanted to grow and develop my arms because they were tiny little sticks. But now I'm happy with the uh, upper body mass and strength that I have. So it's kind of just maintaining and I'm hitting the biceps and triceps through compound exercises like the pull-ups and like the bench press and like the rows. I'm hitting that as like a secondary muscle uh, for those exercises. So just for me, just for this weekly workout, I do my core with my upper body. So now I'm gonna transition into some core exercises. So the first exercise is just the cable ax chop, just like you're chopping wood or twisting, you know, hitting a baseball bat or something. It's all about twisting and turning the core, keeping all of your abs, your obliques, all flexed and tense during this. It's a great exercise for soccer players because we're constantly turning, twisting, kicking, and engaging those twisting oblique muscles, the abs and stuff like that. So it's a great exercise 
for footballers. After the cable chops, I move on to some V-ups, which pretty much hits everything right down the middle of your abs, the lower abs, the middle abs, upper abs, even though I'm not a huge believer in like targeting different sections of the abs, like the upper, middle, lower. I think there's exercises that do have different focuses, but in general, you're kind of gonna hit everything at once with good compound ab exercises. Lastly, I'm finishing off the workout with some bird dogs. This is a deceptively hard workout. I mean, if you're focused and you're doing it the right way, of course you can go through the motions and you'll get no benefit from this at all and it'll be easy. Or you can really focus on squeezing the glute, squeezing the hamstring, squeezing the lower back, squeezing the abs when you crunch back in. It's all about the movement and targeting and, and focusing that like with that mind muscle connection for this exercise. So that's my workout for Tuesday, an upper body strength kind of slash hypertrophy workout. I'll be sore for the next 24 to 48 hours, but it's minor. I can feel it when I'm like, you know, in the shower doing something and kind of like actually trying to test if I'm sore, but it's not crazy and I'm not killing myself. So it's right at that seven out of 10. So now we're progressing into Wednesday. We're slowly creeping towards the weekend, slowly getting closer and closer to game day on Saturday. Even if I had a hard workout here though, I probably still wouldn't be sore for Saturday unless it would be like a crazy 10 out of 10 on the RPE scale. But again, I still wanna taper off a little bit, be safe, be smart, just so I can be as fresh as possible going into game day on Saturday. I like to think of this workout as a lighter, lower body maintenance workout with some prehab exercises. That's like the focus of the workout when I go into the gym. It's not just an easy workout though, like I'm not just going through the motions, I'm still 100% focused in these tiny little movements, but I'd say the RPE scale is probably around a five. I'm still sweating, it's still tough, but I can hold like a, a conversation through a lot of these exercises and the main goal is just kind of target some problem areas and just to hit the lower body, just to maintain everything for, uh, for, the, for the season. So as usual, to start off the workout, I'm hopping on the bike and getting five minutes just to warm up the body slightly and then, and then we're just gonna progress straight into the workout. I mean, I'm not doing any large compound lifts. The, all of these exercises could kind of be viewed as warm up exercises, so I don't really do a warm up before these exercises because they're kind of just kind of like warm up exercises, if that makes sense. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually a circuit involving three different exercises. So the first exercise that we're hitting is a familiar one already from this week, it's the Spanish squat. I'm doing this again, like I said, because I really want to strengthen up the quads and the patellar tendon so that patellar tendonitis doesn't come back and cause me any pain and reduce my performance on the field. That is my main goal. I do not wanna be inhibited by a little bit of pain in the patellar tendon. So I'm doing these exercises to strengthen up that, that tendon and those quads. After that, I immediately transition into some banded hip flexor raises, which is pretty much just putting the band around my feet and then raising my foot straight up, knee straight up to the, uh, the ceiling. This exercise targets the hip flexors, which again is a, uh, a very neglected area for a lot of footballers. I think that a lot of people just go and kind of through the, the big compound exercises. That's something I did when I was growing up and it was great. It helped me a lot when I just focused on the squats and deadlifts and lunges because I built up such a well-balanced and powerful physique that was fast, athletic and, and everything, but I didn't hit a lot of the minor muscle groups, I kind of neglected those with like this stuff, the hip flexor raise, the Copenhagen, stuff like that. And I think later down the road, 24, 25, after I've been playing for 20 years, that kind of caught up with me a little bit. So now I'm really targeting those minor areas like the hip flexor with this hip flexor banded knee raise, uh, just to strengthen up, add a little bit more focus to those problem areas. The last exercise of this circuit is Swiss ball hamstring curls. It's very simple, but it's, it, it kind of works on everything from stability to the glutes to bringing in the ball when you curl in with your hamstrings. It's a great exercise. Again, with soccer players, what usually happens, uh, very common injuries are groin strains, hip flexor strains, and hamstring strains. And that's usually because those areas are weaker in comparison to the larger muscle groups of your body, like the quads, glutes, stuff like that. So I'm kind of focusing on the problem areas, focusing on the areas that are usually neglected, and doing a little bit of work to strengthen those areas up so that when I'm sprinting and running, that they can work in conjunction with those stronger muscle groups. Again, like I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physical therapist, but I've been around the game a long time. I've talked to many, many different physical therapists and, and strength coaches, and this is the consensus that I've, uh, of the information that I've received. So strengthening up the hamstrings, whether you're doing this exercise or Nordic hamstring falls, or you're doing RDLs or single leg RDLs or whatever, is just vital because the hamstrings definitely are usually weaker for most soccer players than their quads. 
After that, I move on to the next circuit, which again targets a very common problem area for footballers, and that's the ankles. This circuit, all of these exercises are going to help improve the mobility and strength of those ligaments in the ankle, which is huge for preventing the probably the most common footballer injury out there, an ankle sprain. The stronger that you can get those ligaments and the more mobile you can get that joint, the less likely you are to get an ankle sprain. Or if you do get an ankle sprain, the faster you'll probably recover from that injury. So we're gonna target the ankle in four different planes of motion. We're gonna do internal rotation, external rotation. We're gonna do dorsiflexion, which is when you bring your toes up to your knee. And then we're gonna do the common like calf raise, the extension of just pushing down. So this circuit is hitting all four ranges of those motion, all four planes of those motion. Um, like I said, just to strengthen up everything. I've dealt with a lot of ankle injuries, um, probably from like 24 or 25. It was like, again, when it started to catch up with me, I never did any ankle stability, never did any ankle specific work from the day I was born until 22, 23. And then I think after just 20 years of playing soccer, being active, running, um, and then you do you know one bad turn, and then your ankle gets sprained. And then now you are more likely to get another ankle sprain because that ligament is now weaker. It's torn a little bit. So uh, this is something I've definitely added into my routine over the years, just to strengthen up these minor areas, focusing on the little details so that I can really perform to your best ability on the field every single day. Because if you have a sore ankle and you can't sprint 100%, you're, not gonna, you're just not at 100%. It's gonna kill you. So I'm putting in a lot of effort on these little tiny details that some people don't focus on, but I can't even explain how much that's helped me because I'll go through those movements now where that ankle turns out and it's not as bad, you know, knock on wood, it's not as bad as it has been before when I do that same exact movement. It doesn't swell up as much, it can retain it, it can hold it a little bit more. So I've found a lot of benefit from these ankle exercises. After that, we move on to the same superset that you found on Monday with the Copenhagens and the planks. Again, the same exact thing that I said before, groins, adductors are a very common injury as well. It's something that it, again is neglected by footballers. So it's just an area that I want to focus on. And then with the planks, again, just a little bit of a core exercise just to target everything, just to actually kind of warm up as well before the session. But again, my main core exercises will be the next day, Thursday on the upper body workout. Last exercise of the session. Again, I kind of view this as a warm up exercise for the training that's just about to start, but this is just banded monster walks, get the uh, glutes firing, get the glutes activated. Nothing crazy, you've probably seen this a million times, but it's a great one. It's great for the glutes, it's great for the entire lower body as well, just to warm up and to really get ready for the training session. So I hope that you guys are seeing that everything really has a purpose, but it's different purposes. I mean, the trap bar deadlift with 180 85 pounds, the purpose of that is to develop compound strength, everything moving and firing together and to really improve the or to develop the muscle strength. While something like the ankle dorsiflexion with the band isn't really to, to develop raw strength or power, it's more to prevent an injury, an ankle sprain, and to focus on a little ligament. But everything has a purpose somewhere within my routine and everything has a purpose kind of specifically for me. You know, I've dealt with a lot of hip flexor, groin, and ankle injuries. So a lot of my work, a lot of my gym routine, especially the prehab stuff, is focused around hip flexor, groin, and ankles. That's just for me. Uh, somebody, you know, if you have a lot of quad issues or you have a lot of hamstring issues, you'll need to tailor your gym program to targeting those areas. And again, I wanna stress that this is not how I was working out when I was 18. And I, not to say that I would go back to when I was 18 and change things, because I think that how I worked out when I was 18, all about power, all about strength, getting stronger, stronger, faster, more athletic, hugely, hugely benefited me and is still benefiting me today. Because I always feel uh, I'm one of the, more of the, uh, of the uh, athletic guys on the field, one of the more faster guys on the field. And I think that's largely to do with how I worked out in my teenage years and even into my 20s, how powerful I worked out and the workouts that I did. Even though it was taxing on the body, I think I, there was more benefits than negatives to those workouts. Now, maybe if I could go back to when I was 18, 17, 16 and just tell them, you know what, maybe start to adding in a little bit of isolation exercises for the groins, for the hip flexors, for the ankles, I probably would do that. But I think that your workout style and your routine is going to change based on where you're at in your career. So for me, and from now on, from 27, 28, 29, 30, I do think this is the prime, but I also think the workouts shift less from developing power, strength, 
and um, just overall athleticism to more of maintaining the power, strength, and athleticism that you've already built up. So for you guys watching this video right now, my advice isn't for you just to take my full weekly gym routine and do exactly that. You can, it's way better than nothing, but the message I'm trying to say is you really need to focus on what your strengths and weaknesses are. Focus on your body, focus on your goals, and then tailor a gym program with the help of a professional or just with research of your own and tailor something that's really gonna be best for you at that stage in your career, at that stage in the year, at that stage in your life or whatever. Okay, now moving on to Thursday's workout. Thursday's workout is probably my lightest actual workout of the week. This workout is just an upper body circuit workout and it's very quick. It's probably like 30 minutes long total, but as usual, hopping on the bike, five to 10 minutes, warming up the entire body, getting a little bit of sweat going on, and then I progress into the actual workout. We are now within 48 hours of the game. So this workout, I really do not wanna have any soreness at all. I don't want even to be sore on my chest or back or anything because even though it's minor, it's gonna inhibit me, my playing style a little bit when it comes to the game. So this workout is probably around an RPE five. It's tough, I'm sweating. It's definitely not easy, but in no way, shape or form, am I gonna feel this the next day? Again, I'm going right up to that limit of with this workout of pushing as much as I can without getting sore. And it's something difficult. There's, you really have to know your body and, and be so consistent with your workout routine. You have to know exactly when you're reaching that limit. And that's something that comes with experience and being consistent and just knowing your body. This workout is just a circuit workout, three rounds of these five exercises, and like I said, it takes 20 to 30 minutes. The first exercise is just push-ups, 25 push-ups, targeting the chest, triceps, obviously. This is like the main exercise for anybody out there that wants to start working out is push-ups. Uh, after that, we transition to 25 med ball toe crunches for some ab work. Um, kind of targeting more of the upper abs with this. But again, like I said, I think it kind of targets everything in your, uh, in your core. Immediately after the toe crunches, I'm going 30 side twisting planks for both sides, my left and my right side. After that, we're going to Superman's, which is just a great you know, body weight exercise for the lower back and posterior chain, going all the way up to your upper back, glutes, hamstrings. Uh, I'm really squeezing when I'm doing this, obviously with these body weight exercises and this prehab maintenance exercises, you can easily, easily go through the motions. So I'm making a conscious effort to focus on squeezing my glutes, focus on squeezing my hamstrings, squeezing my lower back, so I can feel a little bit of a burn when I'm doing these. And then finally, the last exercise of this circuit is just inverted rows. I'm going and taking the uh, Smith machine and I'm just grabbing onto it and rowing myself up. Uh, this targets the entire back, but mainly like the middle back, if you wanna call it that. And uh, just a great simple exercise because we've done some chest work now, you know, with the push-ups, so we're doing the opposite. Uh, I don't really have any specific shoulder work or some any specific arm work. Again, like I said, this workout is kind of just to get the entire upper body and the abs and the core kind of hit just a little bit, get them firing, and then get warmed up for the training session. But like I said, I will not be feeling sore at all from this workout. So now Friday. Friday, this is the day before the game. So kind of as expected, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly light. And usually before training on Friday, we have a film review. So we go and watch film about the other team, about us, and that kind of takes the majority of the time before training where I usually work out. So on Fridays, what I'll usually do is go into the gym, I'll ride the bike for 20 minutes to really just start to get sweating, to get warm, to warm up the body, and then I'll grab a hot pack, put it on my body while I'm watching film, just to stay warm and ready. I do the training and that's it. So it's pretty much not even really a workout. It's really just keeping the body warm and kind of preventing uh, getting cool. You know, I like to be warmed up before I even head out to training and do the warm up. It's like a pre warm up for the warm up. Now, Saturday. For us, Saturday is usually game day. So you will not find me in the gym. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do a little foam rolling, like five to 10 minutes. Maybe I'll do a little bit of like a dynamic stretching routine in the gym, especially on away trips when I've just been lying in bed and traveling. So I'll get the body moving a little bit during game day, but I probably won't even sweat before the game. And then in the locker room before I head out to the actual uh, warm up, I'll do like the same kind of rehab workout, maintenance workout that you saw 
on Wednesday session, the lighter lower body workout, but it's like half of the sets, half of the reps. So, so if that workout on Wednesday was an RPE of five, I'm doing half of it and it's around a two and a half, three. It's literally just to warm up the ankles, warm up the groin, warm up the lower abs and the hip flexors and, and obviously the quads and the major areas as well, but to warm up and activate everything before I head out. And then finally, Sunday. Sunday is usually our off day. And actually today, for me, is Sunday right now. It's my off day. Just played on Saturday. And today, what I'll do is a uh, little yoga and a little foam rolling routine. I have, I just uploaded a full 30 minute stretching slash yoga routine that I do. I actually will be doing that today as well. And I'll be following myself doing that. So I literally will have that video up on the TV and I'll listen to myself and stretch. I don't know if that's the most narcissistic thing ever, but that's what I'm going to be doing today. And then afterwards, maybe like five, 10 minutes of foam rolling. So um, if you guys want to check out that yoga stretching routine, that video, it will be in the description. I have my full foam rolling routine that really hasn't changed in years. I have it from back in 2017. I'll put it in the description as well. But Sunday, just a little active recovery. Get the body moving a little bit, get a little bit of sweating, get a little bit of the range of motion back, but it's very, very light and getting ready to start up the workouts again on Monday. So anyway, that's it. That's my weekly routine. And that is what like pretty much everything that goes through my head, why I'm doing every single exercise, why I'm working out the way that I am, how hard the workouts are and how sore I am for everything. I hope you guys can take something from this video, whether it's just a, a one exercise that you wanna add to your routine, whether it's the entire routine that you wanna try out, um, whether it's just a little bit of information or value that you're getting from seeing how I look at my week. I hope that you guys can get something. And if you can, I would love it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's, uh, that's what my typical average week looks like. And like I said, differs from week to week. It all depends on how my body's feeling and how sore I am, the little knocks and, and niggling injuries that I have going on. But uh, that's a very, very average week for me. So if you guys like the video, please, 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 like I said, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace. Um, last thing, actually, uh, if you guys have any questions about this routine, something I didn't cover in this video, I know it's a very comprehensive video, a very long video, but if you have any questions at all, let me know below and I'll try my best to answer them or at least somebody else can answer them. Maybe somebody else knows as well the answer to the question. So ask your questions below if you have any and uh, that's it, so peace.